G'day! In today's video, I'm going to be upgrading this Acer Nitro to a 1TB Crucial MX 2.5 inch drive, which will be requiring these screws and this little adapter that should be in your packaging. Going to some Crucial 3200MHz RAM, 2 8 Now let's flip this over to reveal what model we are dealing with today. This one's a pretty darn new model. It's running the 10300H, a quad core i5, and a 3060. So if we have a look down here, we have the model number A515 55 5838. Also, model N20C1. So, what we're going to do is start off by taking off the back bottom or the bottom cover. Now we just need a reasonably normal Phillips head screwdriver for this. I'm just going to use one of my smaller varieties I've got around. And let's also see along the way how repairable and, uh, and what can be repaired. Right now, we're looking like we're the same screws. Hopefully it's the same story the whole way through this device. Now with all those screws taken out, I'm just going to probably pry from the front at this point. I'm hoping I can just get a fingernail in there to begin with. And then I will switch it to a plastic pry tool. That's the noise we want to hear. And then from there, I should just be able to pull the rest of it into the back. There we go, now we're looking inside. What do we see? The cooling on it I don't actually mind, even though it's got a bit lacklustre in cooling pipes. What I see to begin with is one NVMe slot here with a Western Digital blue by the looks of it. I oh, know. SN530, wireless card here. Further down, we have a hard drive which we'll be using. Have one slot stick of RAM. SK Hynix, 8 gig, 3200 megahertz. That'll be swapping over for a match pair. Shouldn't really matter if you do put a different brand in there. Have a look over here. We do also have another NVMe slot. So they're pretty straightforward to place. But to begin with, I'm just going to do the RAM and I'll start with just by disconnecting the battery down here. So what I'm going to do is get two fingernails under each side and walk that battery connector backwards, like that. We're now disconnected. Next up is the RAM. So I'm going to pull that to the side and that just lifts up. I'll take that out. Grab my two new pair. Now I'm going to slide that in on a 45 degree angle and pull down. Do take note of the notch that's here. Like that. Push down and we're in. Same with over here. Push in on a 45 degree angle. Pull down. We're connected. And from there, there's no configuration that's needed for that. That is purely done. And for the NVMe, very similar scenario. Take out the small Phillips head screw. And it just sticks up like that. Wiggles back. We're out. Slide it in on a 45 degree angle. Or probably a bit less than that, but do you understand? And then pull down. 
and that is now one installed NVMe. So you can just do that over here if you do so want to install two of them. At the minute I didn't really have too much on hand so I've gone with putting a one terabyte 2.5 inch SSD in instead. You'll get to see that. So overall the build quality of this is pretty much on par with what I normally expect with most machines these days. The repairability side of it's pretty much the same as well. And then I'm going to take this out, take my extra screws out, just put them to the side here. And this slides into here, like so. And then going by the fold, it would go like that. So I'm going to have to go around, which way will it be? I think this way to go into this connector down here. But to begin with, I'm going to screw this into position. Oop, it might help if I use the right screws, the larger screws from the bag. And one more screw down here. There we go. Next up is locating it back to here. I do need to flick this little connector up then run that into there. There we go. So we're now in place, this connector flips down and that is nearly installed. Need to put the, the mounting screws back in that hold the bracket into position. Then lastly after this we just have to reconnect the battery and seal it back up and from there we'll be done. So from here go back over to the battery and use a pair of tweezers to make this easier as it is pretty tight in this area. There we go. And it just pushes forward like so. So looking at it, what do we have here? We have a 57 watt hour battery. I do believe there'd probably be a, a larger battery available which will run the full length without the drive tray over here. Also looking over here we have a very large power jack. There we go, sorry about that. So that would be, it would be replaceable but you would require a fair bit of heat in there to do that. So hopefully you don't damage your, your charger jack. And from here, I'm going to seal this back up once more. So now we've everything installed, let's get the back cover on. So I'm going to slide this over the back first. So you can see we have some weird little things going on here for the MVMEs. But let's slide this over the back here. Click. And I just want to crunch it all the way around. Next up, let's just put our screws back in. So from here it's just a matter of putting all your Phillips head screws back in and you should be mostly done. If you had added a hard drive in, you will have to go into disk management and format that drive to make it work, otherwise it won't really appear to be installed. And if you've added extra RAM, all you should have to really do from there is nothing. <laughs> With RAM all you should have to do is physically put it in. Once it's in put into the machine, the BIOS should automatically acknowledge it and then Windows should automatically use it. So 
hope this helps with the upgrade on your Acer AN515-55. The 2021 model. Granted, this is the base model. But this should hopefully give it a little bit more improvement and a little bit more storage. Might help if I can find where I need to put my last screws. There we go. So I'll be seeing you guys later. Catch us in another video. Bye.